Infotopia presents Texas Indians, the Alabama Cushata Tribes. The Alabamas and the Cushatas were actually two separate tribes, but are grouped together because of their similar languages and where they lived. At first, they lived in what is now Alabama, and the state was named for them. By the 1780s, they moved to the big thicket region of Texas between the Sabine and Brazos rivers. This jungle-like area was excellent for hunting, gathering, and fishing. Its thickness prevented the Spanish and other settlers from entering the area. The Alabama Cushata villages usually included small cabins spread out for miles through the woods and along streams and connected by trails. They lived in family groups in the cabins and they had a patch of land for growing vegetables and fruit trees. They also hunted and fished and gathered seeds and berries to provide food for themselves. To travel from village to village, they used their network of trails. Traveling through the big thicket was almost impossible without the trails that they had built. In the early 19th century, Anton was the chief of the Alabamas, and Lone King was the chief for the Cushadas. The chief was the spokesman for the tribe and was the leader and decision maker in all tribal affairs. The Alabama Cushada Indians preferred to keep the peace with their neighbors, but would fight if needed. Sam Houston asked the Alabama Cushada to assist at San Jacinto to defeat Santa Ana, but San Jacinto was won before they were able to participate. However, they did take care of settlers who were injured in the runaway scrape. They also served as guides for Texans during this time. After Texas became independent in 1836, President Sam Houston planned a peaceful relationship with the Indians. Mirabeau B. Lamar, the second president of Texas, preferred destroying hostile Indian tribes and sending the friendly tribes away from the Republic of Texas. However, his harsh policies were not applied to the Alabama Cushada. After 1865, the Alabama Cushada lived on a reservation, but most could not speak English and few had jobs. The areas where they usually hunted, fished, or gathered were being taken over by settlers. Finally, in 1880, there were job opportunities in the timber industry because of the railroad construction from Houston to Shreveport. They became American citizens in 1924 and in 1948 were able to vote in Texas. They now have a cultural center, medical center, stores, and a huge campground near Lake Tombigbee, visited by more than 200,000 visitors a year. They hold an annual powwow during the first weekend of June. For more information about Texas history and Texas Indians, visit infotopia.info. Subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss our next video. Thanks for being here. See you next time.